Several years ago, I wrote a book called Barn Fine Road Trip, and I made my way all through this part of the, of the country, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania. And there are people I met that I really enjoyed. So we're going back right now to visit a man named C.T., the father C.T., the son C.T. I, I think actually there were four generations of C.T.'s, and they had an auto repair shop, a travel trailer, sales and service facility, and a bunch of old cars. Check it out. The dad, this is him, and that's his son, and his son now has a CT, so the third, fourth, fifth, sixth generation. C, Hardesty the sixth, so the sixth generation with the name CT, which stands for? Charles Triplet Hardesty. So this is trailer repair and we work on car trailers. sales. Mm -hmm. And, and a DMV office. We are a Virginia DMV select service. Uh -huh. uh, the reason dad is a, a DMV agent, because he didn't want you to have to go to the big full service to buy your tag when he sold you a car. Uh -huh. He probably told you that story. Oh yeah, he did, it was it's great. It's our, our uh, parts building select. for trailers. All right, more Riatas. Is that a four cylinder Fiero? Yes. Okay, it made Not a V6, I don't know. Okay. Midget. Yeah, you know what, a convertible with the top down, Sitting outside is not a good thing. Uh, that was given to me to get it off the property. Just to, that man said, move it. Just yep. get it away from my property. My grandfather's 47 that grandpa bought new. Bought it new? Mm-hmm. So that would be I, CT the second? CT Junior, yeah. So yeah. I, I guess you call him second. Wow. He would load corn in that, and I'd ride with him to Winchester, to a place in Winchester that, had, that processed the corn into, to, to feed in bags. We'd, we'd un unload it out the back of that truck into a hopper. It had a floor, they took took top off. We loaded the corn into the into that, they crushed it. Then we took bags for the cattle. I'd drive with my grandpa to do that. So where's your, where was your farm, near here? Uh, Summer Point. Summer Point? Right near the Speedway. Huh. Right there at the Jefferson County, Clark County line. Do you still that, own that way? No, no. Dad owns still, well, my, my stepmother owns the house there, grandma and grandpa's house but uh, uh, he sold the farm. If we just walk down this road over here, we could see a couple of cars in the woods. And that'll be about right. it. Got some international travel laws here. Do people ever stop? Oh, oh yeah, they stop and come out and buy, ask me, or they stop and shoot the windows out. Shoot the windows out. So you got a Mercury Monterey with the slam pack yep, window? Yep, yep. You got a Buick Fastback, probably a 49 or so. Yep, and that's, uh, was it? Was that a 50 Buick? Is that yeah, in there? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Is that the one that had the straight eight in it? Yep. That's a Mercury. That's a 39 Mercury. Oh, is I it? have three 40 sedans <laughs> up in there. <laughs> three 40 sedans. Oh. I think you might have a picture of them in the. I think so. When you all got yeah, in I'm going to take your word for it this time. <laughs> As you see, I still use a flip phone, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> hey, look over on the wall. See if the key's there to the roll up door on the trailer. Why you got three of them in here? Yep. Fits perfect in there. Can you get in there? Can, you get in there? Can I help you in any way, shape, form? Nope. So we have a convertible. Last on the road in 2014. These all were automatic we're, transmissions. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to put this one on his tombstone. This, this is the only red one in here, right? Right. The other one's black at the back. You're going to engrave it on tombstone? They're really? going to engrave it on tombstone. Wow. It, was this his favorite or? Uh, this is one of them he drove. Yeah, doors closed nicely. So here we can take a look at the drivetrain here. So this was a standard General Motors drivetrain, front wheel drive, whatever, built into an exotic body. Exotic, in quotes. And so that's a hard top. And then here's another convertible. And this looks to be like some kind of maybe purple. Last on the road in 2005. What would you sell these for? I'm asking 10 grand each. 10 grand each. Mm -hmm. And are they, are they like low mileage? Uh, yes, yes, in the 30s and 40s. And they, and they are run. Are they worth that? But they run. I've I mean, got I've got an offer up to seven on the on the green one. Uh -huh. I told him I told him 10 grand. And I'll throw in one of the parts cars. You know, I'll throw I'll, in a parts car. I'll throw in a parts you know, car. You know what a great idea? Because you can't get parts here anymore, probably. That's that's a fact. How do you get it up here? I, I'll put it on the rollback. Back the roll okay. back up, and you put the wheel lift down, it races it right <laughs> up to it perfectly. So it's been probably eight or nine years ago since, since we last 
talk, but I remember enjoying being here with all the generations of CTs, and maybe I'll get to meet six one day. Yeah, come back about six years. Six years. And now you're not going to leave any of this. No, they're all, they will all be gotten rid of. <laughs> I hope to still own the place. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. all this, all that stuff has to go, so my kids don't have to clean it. It's got to be cleaned up, as you you can see what it is. So as opposed to most Barn Find Hunter episodes where nothing's for sale or maybe I'd sell that. They're for sale, not the Starliner. This man's saying everything's for sale. Except for the Starliner. <laughs> Except for Star, which is his baby. And, and it'll go to my son. Cool. CT, it's been a pleasure seeing you again, man. Yes, sir. I'll see you in eight or nine years. I hope before that, somewhere. Thank you so much. Is this the roadster in here? That's the roadster in there. This is my friend, Paul Wilson, and every time I go up the highway to New York, Maine, Hershey, Pennsylvania, whatever, I gotta get to his exit and come and visit. Couldn't get a hold of him on the phone. He's playing hard to get. Anyway, we stopped by and he's here. I said, can we do an episode here? He said, come on in. So here we are. You were an English professor. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, he retired and decided, I'm gonna start building my own cars. Cars that I've like fantasized about my whole life. And so I haven't even seen this car since He's just, just started it, but he's building his own car. There's a very important distinction here. I could get a Chevy truck and I could build, get a piece of fiberglass and I could make some kind of body on it. What I wanted was an Alpha 2.9. Uh, the latest one sold for $18 million and everybody was arguing with each other, why did it sell so cheap? Then I realized that the high-end cars of that period, Ferrari had Ghia and Farina and Zagato making bodies for them. What I'm gonna do is put myself in the position of an Italian designer in 1948 when the chassis was made and make what they could have made in 1948 if they'd only looked at it the way I do. This is one of two uh, 1948 Alfa Romeo 6500s with all of the stuff that Alfa made when new sent it around the corner to have a body put on it and this body happens to be made half a century more later by me. So in we go. Yeah so I, I haven't been here in more than two years, two and a half years probably so we'll see how, how much work has been done. Understand, this body is made by an English professor. <laughs> Jeez. This is a steel body. What, what, what's the Italian word for bodybuilding? Uh, carrozzeria. The, Paul, it looks fantastic. I have to admit, it's coming out pretty well. I wanted to build this on a 6C2500 chassis, and so I got a chassis by a miracle because they're hard to find. And, and there were two barn find cars you bought as a package, right? Uh, in 1975, I bought three of these, stripped the parts off two of them, and brought only one chassis home. It was a long shot because they didn't make many of these. From the time you took the first flat piece of metal, to this finished fender, how long do you figure you have invested? How much time invested in that? So I made a form uh, with rods and flat pieces of metal. Take your piece, make the best you can, yeah. put it up, and you can look behind to see whether it fits. And you can just keep putting it back on and putting it back on. Back to your original question, it really isn't that hard. <laughs> wow. I could have you here for two or three days, and I could have you make a piece like this piece right here as well as I can. It's, you know, it's not that hard. Did you make the grill as well? Yeah, yeah. In order to have the grill be something that fits, you take a piece of metal and you, you know, make it. Are you doing your own upholstery work? Uh, all except for the seats. Someone who knows how to make seats can, but this is all you. That's all me. Man. Most of it is very satisfying because you work on a little thing and then you, at the end of the day, you just say, oh man, isn't that, you know, isn't that beautiful? The, the taillights are 1939 Chevy. Chevy. That's yep. what I thought. Yep, yep, you got it. Yep. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> never, never do hard work when you can cheat. So, 
Does this lift? Yep, yep. And so did you, you made this? It started life on an MGB, uh, but it was narrowed and modified and, and extended and Jeez. then, a, you know, something. So let's go look at the, the finished product in the inside. So I wish it were more finished. It's looking less finished than the last time you saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, couldn't you have cleaned this floor up? <laughs> I told you. I, I warned you when you arrived. Yep. So this, I mean, this project's been done now for several years, I guess, right? Uh, it was almost done. Uh, there were complicated problems. For example, the top level alphas of the 30s, as you know, had superchargers. Uh, this car needs a little more power, and I found out there was a guy in Australia making a supercharger that not only uh, increased the power of the engine, but look at that. All those finned uh, things on the intake manifold. You know, it's, it's just a beautiful thing. I got a supercharger from him. That's amazing, yeah. And then when the car was put together, started the engine, that the supercharger screamed. There's a gear that's made uh, too big. And the gear, instead of having a little, uh, right, a little play, play yeah. uh, was bottoming out, and it, and it was just too big. Uh, and and they said, no, no, it's your problem, and this and that. So they fixed the gear and they sent it back. That's <clears throat> that's one problem. The original transmission just wasn't strong enough. So if you have a little more power and then you nail it in the wrong gear, you can tear up the transmission. It's not strong enough. You know, we have this thing called sundown right now, and so we're losing light rapidly. I would love to go through each car in his collection here because they all have a great story. Uh, he's got a more eclectic taste than even I have, but uh, you can come we'll back. have to come back another day. <laughs> you can come back, Tom. You're welcome. <laughs> Paul, thank you so much for having us. <laughs> Happy hunting. <laughs>